and gentlemen, welcome back to the World AI and RPA show. And right now, we are on our talk on the panel discussion, the impacts of AI and RPA on the customer experience. Well, this session brings together leaders from a variety of client-facing enterprises to discuss the important role AI plays in developing a superior customer-focused business. Topics to be discussed include how does content personalization through the use of AI drive predictive analytics and improve your long-term customer retention, the evolution of voice technology and conversational AI, is the use of machine learning to gain insights into consumers' user behavior preferences and feedback, truly allowing a more customer-focused experience, matching customers with their next possible sale are one area in which AI-enhanced customer experience management has been a trailblazer what do we see as the next key area AI will be enabled to increase overall customer satisfaction and extracting actionable insights from customer interactions across all channels? Well, for this panel, we're later to be joined by our panelists. First up, Anil Kumar, Senior Director, Middle East and Africa Unifor. Well, Anil is a media, uh, is a Middle East veteran with over 20 years in the region, having successfully founded two ventures as an entrepreneur. He's known to be an avid evangelist for AI, machine learning, and language trends in digital and web transformation that drive commerce across the spectrum of enterprises. His experience has spanned banking, telecom, government, retail, driving digitally enabled customer experience across the technology spectrum. Anil leads the region's push to ingrain the data-driven analytics from a wealth of voice and text-based customer interaction and looks into interacting the Middle East, Africa, and Central East Europe with his team by enabling local enterprise-focused technology partners. With this, I'd now like to welcome Anil on your screen. Thank you so much, Anil, for joining us today. Thanks, Bhavna. Ladies and gentlemen, joining us next on the screen is Imtiaz Adam, the Founder, Director, Strategy and Data Science, Deep Learn Strategies Limited, London. Imtiaz is a leading influencer on AI, machine learning, deep learning, fintech, and spoke at Davos during the WEF 2019 on a panel on AI. Imtiaz is ranked as the leading global influencer in AI and digital technology by the likes of Mark Tech Post, San Francisco-based, and IPFC uh, Online, France-based, and was also in the UK BAME 100 Most Influential for Technology. With this, I'd now like to welcome Imtiaz. Thank you for joining us, Imtiaz. Hello, pleasure to be here. Looking forward to the discussion. Likewise, Imtiaz. We're also now joined on the stage and screen by Anas uh, Shehab, uh, the CIO of Movie Cinemas, Riyadh KSA. Well, Anas has 22 plus years of experience out of which five plus of uh, years in the digital transformation and 10 plus years in the IT advisory services with EY. Anas has a strong leadership and experience in leading large system implementation, including ERP, CRM, BI Cinema Operation Platforms. With this, I'd now like to welcome Anas. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, my pleasure. Great to have you. Uh, well, yeah. uh, uh, Ahmad uh, Sharaf is facing a network issue, uh, so we'll see if he can join us, but he being the head of process re-engineering EB Bank Egypt. So if in case uh, we do have him joining us back, we'll uh, keep you posted. But before that, I'd like to now invite uh, Sanjeev Madhavi, the Chief Digital Transformation Officer, Kimji Ramdas, LLC, Oman, joining us. Well, a seasoned senior executive with relentless focus on business and digital innovation across the end-to-end -end enterprise value chain driven towards resource optimization and bottom line impact. With over two decades of experience in setting up, operationalizing and transforming businesses, Digitally, uh, he's somebody who's strategizing future outcomes across assignments to create and sustain an unparalleled competitive advantage in the new world order of digital-based economy and customer experience management. With this, I'd now like to welcome Sanjeev on the screen. Thank you, Sanjeev, for joining us. Oh, it's a pleasure to be here. And ladies and gentlemen, with this, it is now time for me to introduce you to the moderator of the session, Ashraf Gaber, the Regional Director, Publications and Editorial, TechX Media. 
while Ashraf is an Egyptian economist with 25 plus years of experience working and living in Dubai, United Arab Emirates. He's the founder and CEO of EBR Partners, House of Media Experts in UAE since 2016. Ashraf has a large experience in economy and international cooperation as a writer, speaker, and a lecturer. He's somebody who's led and worked with many newspapers and magazines in UAE, Egypt, Germany, Canada, and Australia. Currently, he's the editorial manager at TechX uh, Review for Africa and Nordic. He's also the CEO and editor-in-chief of Silta magazine, which is published in Helsinki and Abu Dhabi to support economic, cultural, and scientific relations between GCC and Nordic. And he's also the editor-in-chief and CEO of eBusiness Review, published in Dubai, printed in Arabic and English. Thank you so much, Ashraf, for joining us today. Thank you, Pooja. Pleased so to join you today, yeah, thank you. Pleasure. So ladies and gentlemen, with this, uh, we now like to uh, hand it over to Ashraf to take it forth with this panel. If you may have any questions for our panel, please do type it up in the Q&A. With this, Ashraf, it's all yours. Thank you so much. Uh, really, I'm so happy to uh, moderate that important panel, which uh, have uh, uh, actually uh, like five of the most important leaders of that sector in uh, our region and maybe some far regions also. Uh, so I welcome you all guys. And uh, actually it's very important that uh, we have to talk today about AI and about uh, 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 the impact of AI uh, actually generally, especially for uh, customers. I would like to start with Anil uh, Mr. Anil Kumar, most welcome, dear. And I would like you, as a beginning, to give us within like a couple of minutes, like introduction, just introduction about uh, uh, what we can talk about today from your point of view, from your uh, deep experience. Thanks, Ashraf. Well, uh, AI, machine learning, RPA, customer experience, this has been the buzz for a while now. Uh, 70% of customer interactions today happen in the contact center. So when we have a problem, we typically call an 800 number and the voice of the customer is basically answered. And it starts to make sense only when you hear everything that the customer is saying. I mean, every word your customer is saying to make sense of it. It's important, it needs to be listened to and responded to appropriately. Extracting intent, the meaning from every dialogue together with the history or the customer's history is to give context. That gives us the actual message of what the customer is trying to convey. So the customer journey starts with that interaction. The million dollar question is how do we use all of this customer generated data? Hundreds of agents, millions of conversations, fragmented dialogues, transactions, uh, all seems too vast to make sense. Of. So that's where AI, data science, and now RPA is all coming together. Here are some must do's in my opinion for an enterprise. One is to listen to every discussion, transcribe every customer interaction in whatever language or channel, whether it's chat, whether it's voice, whether it's uh, emails, whether it's in Arabic, Gulf English spoken, English Arabic, uh, or UK or even Australian English. And then we have Egyptian Arabic and we have Saudi Arabic accents and so on. Every word needs to be recorded and transcribed. It starts with that. So every customer interaction is on record. Then that becomes data, which is the transcribed dialogues that need to be analyzed in real time or for actions to be initiated later. So data science basically helps draw the patterns to help us draw those conclusions on what's being asked of the enterprise from their customers. AI and data science have converted the corpus of interactions now into actionable information. So that is a question about how. What do we do next? Now, information analysis is not just understanding what is said, but it also has sentiment, emotion, tone, anger, behavioral messages, and every nuance of that conversation that's being communicated needs to be captured. Notifications then need to be sent to those responsible so actions can be initiated so the enterprise actually can respond to that customer. It could be a real-time supervisor in a contact center, or a business leader actioning a business or operational response that triggers a process change in the organization. Yeah. Now the learning in the form of feedback loop is key. 
The AI needs constant curation, improvement in the learning model that ensures that all the learnings are incorporated in every ongoing response, ideally personalized, and importantly, that's relevant to that interaction and every subsequent interaction that happens. Arsha, in a context interview often heard, this call is being recorded for training and quality purposes. In short, not just recording conversations, but listening to them, taking appropriate action, automated or human initiated, that drives better customer experiences across every channel. It drives CSATs or customer satisfaction scores or customer effort scores. In the UAE, we call this the happiness quotient. That's my summary of what, it, what it's all about. Thank you. Amazing. Thank you, Anil. Uh, good start, actually, for our discussion today. Uh, thank you so much again. And I will uh, pass the uh, mic to uh, Mr. Sanjeev Madhavi, uh, the Chief Digital Transformation Officer in Henji Ramdas Group. Most welcome, sir. And Thank you. I would like to ask you, how do you see the role of AI in crafting CX strategies? From your point of view. Yeah. So I think it's, it's, a, it's a very it's a very interesting time that we're all living in. As as you all, as we all know, you know, AI has been ushering a new approach for customer experience um, as as a concept. You know, the way it is strategized, the way it is designed, the way it is developed, and I think. It's, it's, it's unprecedented in times because the kind of scale of, of, of internet change and transformation that we're talking about has not been seen since, since the advent of the, the dot-com boom of the early you know, 2000s, where we had print professionals suddenly become digital pioneers. So this is now the second phase of that approach where everyone on a digital platform has to really enhance their uh, image as well as their entire ecosystem in order to make the customer experience extremely proactive and real time. Um, if I may sort of take uh, a quick approach to this, I mean, I'm trying to sort of summarize the whole context in three quotes. I've just recently you know, sort of seen these three quotes. The first one is from, from Claire Musket, where she says, building a good customer experience does not happen by accident. It happens by design. So I think the, 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 evident, the evident story here from, from a successful leader is that they are looking at designing a good customer experience. And that is telling us what we have to do. We have another statement coming from, from Annette France, where she says, you cannot transform something if you don't know how it is. So unless you know the current status of current of customer experience in your organization, how can you possibly design the future state? And to answer these two, Quotes. I have a quote from, from, from one, of our, one of the most famous personalities in, 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 in our current era, from, from Mr. Jeff Bezos, where his take on this is this. He says, we see our customers as invited guests to a party and we are their hosts. So it's our job every day to make every single aspect of this customer experience a little bit better. So I think in summary, if I may sort of bring it all together, it is all about how we understand and nurture the experience, how we sort of design it together. And we have to take the steps one by one because surely, as you all know, in today's world, we have to take a very risk-free approach because branding concepts, uh, you know, the legalities involved, everything for an organization today is on, on a very, very high risk mode. You can have a very fast success and you have to have a very, very fast failure. So we have to make sure everything goes by design in the right manner without a failover you know, issue. That's, that's my take on it, Ashok, thank you. This is really great. Thank you, Sanjeev. Uh, really uh, deep opinion. Thank you so much again. And uh, before uh, passing the uh, mic to Anas, I have to invite, I would like to invite uh, Mr. Imtiaz to, uh, to talk about uh, AI, artificial intelligence. Actually, it, 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 uh, AI is uh, the most common word, to people worldwide talking about that now. So uh, where is AI going in, uh, within the coming uh, few years, especially in 2020, and how will you will it impact the customers, uh, Mr. Intias? Well, thank you, thank you for the question and also the comments from the, the previous speakers. So, building upon what's already been said, we're living in the era of big data, and this device, the mobile, the smart mobile, has been hugely influential in creating a lot of that data. And when we talk about AI, we use it as an umbrella term. 
The AI, AI has been an academic field of research since the 50s, but the bits, the parts of it, the subsectors that really work in the real world have been mostly machine learning and deep learning, deep learning being a subsector of machine learning, where we're learning essentially from, think of it as automated statistics really, to find patterns in the data and give meaningful insights. And with deep learning over the last 10 years, we've had huge inroads in computer vision, advances I should say, and also over the last few years with transformers, with language, which gives us context and understanding and qualitative issues, which matter to the customer, right? Now we can start to understand with much better uh, precision what the customer is saying. Language translation has improved dramatically. So we've seen the rise of transformers and multimodal transformers that combine computer vision with NLP. And it's no accident that the likes of Facebook, Amazon, um, Google, et cetera, who have a lot of the big data, ByteDancer and TikTok, have been very powerful in marketing. So you can see it does work. And in actual fact, Alibaba in Singles Day last year sold a record $175 billion of uh, products combining computer vision with NLP together. So increasingly the ability to understand that customer interaction and journey and personalize it. So for example, a lot of the time we don't appreciate the value of the data we have. I've built an application uh, that taking data feeds from 70 different retailers in the, um, in the clothing space. And often the metadata there, for example, if you have something that says the words round striped t-shirt, if your customer's looking for that, you can also go and find the other round striped t-shirts through the language, through the text and recommend it to them. Or you can find things that other customers would normally combine that with and create bundled offers. So it's really getting the value because when we look at the big Vs of big data, you often hear volume, veracity, variety, et cetera, but value really matters for us as a business. So also deriving value from it is key. Where is AI going in 2022? Increasingly to the edge, to the edge of the network, <clears throat> real-time interactions, often on the mobile, not just on a remote cloud server. So the ability to interact with a customer near real time make targeted recommendations to them because increasingly customers are not patient, right? They've had this digital experience. And one of the consequences of the COVID tragedy is that um, we're going increasingly digital. Digital businesses, everybody had to go digital. That's accelerating the adoption of AI because where digital goes, it creates a data footprint, AI follows. So that's the world we're going to. Increasingly on the edge, smart interconnected devices, which are going to be all around us, sensors, etc and now near real-time interactions with the customer. As the previous speaker pointed out, we're going into an era where change is gonna happen faster than ever before in human history. As 5G networks scale, as we get more and more on the edge and real-time interactions with the customer, understanding their needs. And even if you're a traditional business, like a Harley Davidson, for example, Harley Davidson New York found that by adopting machine learning four years ago, they increased sales leads 3000% in New York. So it's not just about being you know, digital for new businesses. Whatever your business is, you can learn to use data effectively. One additional point I'd make though, is if you're new to this field, don't go to the most cutting edge area. That because the failure rates are very high, especially when you're new to this area. Start by engineering your data, understanding your data, and start with the simpler AI techniques before you go into more advanced things like transformers and deep reinforcement learning. Make it, get the low hanging fruit, and then keep on building that knowledge internally to go to more advanced areas. Very clear. Thank you, MTS. Uh, MTS is a founder and a director of strategy and data science, uh, deep learning strategy limited, uh, strategies limited London. Uh, welcome, sir. And my uh, next question to Mr. Uh, Anas Shehab. Uh, Anas is the CIO movie Cinemas in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. Most welcome, Mr. Anas. Thank you. Uh, pleased to have you today with us. And I would like to ask you if, if the use of machine learning uh, to gain insight, uh, the customer uh, user behavior, uh, preference, uh, 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 and also uh, feedback truly allowing uh, a more customer focused experience. Uh, kindly talk with us about that. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity. 
I think uh, most of the gentlemen here, they, they talk about the puzzle of the digital transformation, which is the CX journey, then the consumer of the data, understanding the data, and how we can generate an insights that is uh, within the context of each business uh, uh, and industry. I think what is, what is very important uh, for all businesses is to understand the customer more and do a, a, like a real-time segmentation of their customers based not on the classical model that is geographical, gender, and et cetera, but it's also to combine this with external data and behaviors, and also to, to have an, a comparison that is done through AI with the uh, peers of the your customer with the with the with their peers in the signal. So this will give you a truly AI insights about what is the what is the behavior, what is the next action, what we can do for our customers to bring the wow experience. And most importantly, there's a, a, another terminology that we need to also raise it up to increase the engagement with the customer. How it is not about the transaction and collecting sales. It's what is, what is happening before and what we can offer to our customers differently from other, uh, uh, from other competitors. How, how is the, uh, we enable the, the sales transactions or the sales journey in a better informed decisions while providing relevant insights and actions to be taken by our customer. Then what is happening after that? Are we keeping engaging with the customers with a smart notification, not just the blind notification? It is relevant to the customer behavior interest. And this is very important that the customer would like to feel all the time we are talking to him with a relevant context, not a bulk and generic, generic offers or uh, offering loyalty uh, points that is, that is everybody is doing. And it's not relevant to me uh, sometimes. We also, uh, we need to touch about personalization. And uh, yes, everybody would like to do uh, personalization, but it should be on the right time on the right channel, or for the right location, with the context for relevant to the customer. And these combining these factors at a, one, at a very short time, it requires an algorithm that is running in real time and providing relevant insights. So I believe the AI can play a, different, a key differentiator on reshaping the digital journey even the physical journey, because the customers all the time, they are using the smartphones, it, even during the physical journey. So we are not, we are not uh, dividing the journeys now, physical and digital, but also we are combining them with the context, with a smart notification, and with an informed decision by consuming a lot of the data that we are collecting for the benefit of our customers. I think this is the context of how we continuously enabling a digital journey as well as physical journey to bring the wow factor to our customers. This is great. Thank you, Mr. Anas. Uh, yes, AI is amazing and it will change uh, the face of the life, how it looks, but for sure there is many challenges uh, uh, regarding to that uh, everywhere. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, I don't know if Mr. Ahmed, uh, we lost him because of the connection. I hope he can uh, join us again. So uh, I will come back again to you, uh, dear Anil. Uh, most welcome again. And let's talk about future. AI is the future. So what is the future of contact centers driving uh, innovation with RPA and IA 
uh, it's important topic. So uh, we are looking for your contribution here. Uh, please unmute. Thanks. That's this question. You know, there was a time when we thought that contact centers would disappear and, you know, all the bots would take over and this whole, uh, you know, 800 number business would just text. So we'd just call a voice bot and we'd get all our answers. Uh, but let's, uh, historically, over the last 20 years, the call center, which started from a receptionist picking up the phone, to a mass managed engagement center. It has been a slow transition, but it's been happening as we speak. We're all familiar with the frustrating experience of punching numbers, you know, press one for this, press two for that. We get to an agent finally, and still they can't answer our questions or figure out what we're asking for. And when they do figure it out, they don't have all the answers. Now, where's this headed? That was your question. Now, AI and RPAs and interactive, assistance and all of that are becoming part. Uh, as MTA has said, it's all on the phone and that, that should be pretty much all your answers right there. But the call center has moved from picking calls to an intelligent data and human engagement center. It handles all kinds of transactions. It could be uh, phone calls, chats, texts, emails, and even video interactions. Because with COVID, we've seen all of us on Zoom and teams and what have you. So even video interactions are going to become our way of life. Now, with contact centers being enabled, with the digitization of voice, text, chat, and email, data being analyzed, action, refined, the contact center is poised to move from an operational complaint management center to an information dissemination center, and now to a full-blown profit center. Oftentimes, managements are always you know, saying, oh, the contact center, that, that's a cost center. They're just answering calls, you know, it's a, 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 a devil that we have to live with. But let's look at some of the areas where this contact center impact could actually happen. The agents are being trained and becoming smarter through AI and intelligent bots sitting alongside their work environment on a real-time basis, increasing sales when they see a telesales opportunity they actually smell it. They look at propensity models and they're actually trained to upsell and cross sell as the AI prompts the next best action based on that cons cons customer's data. So that's top line impact for you, but your numbers are actually being impacted. Another area that banks are seeing impact on, or BPOs are actually doing a lot of, is receivables or collections. This is, this is the dirtiest end of the business. You've done everything you promised. You delivered what you did to the customer, the customer promised to pay, and then either he loses his job or he doesn't want to pay, or he was just a fraudster, he's running around and you got to track him down and get your money out. Now, AI is able to run several propensity models or behavioral models and give you an insight into each customer's reasons for delaying a payment. And we've seen AI is actually increasing collections by over 20%. In some cases, BPOs are actually putting their money on the line and taking a gain share model with their end customers and saying, don't worry, just pay me for what we collect. That's bottom line impact for you for a bank or for anyone who's looking to collect money. Compliance, there are huge legal implications or regulatory fines that come through if you're not able to get all parts of your tick boxes that the customers will agree on. That's legal impact. Let's talk about cost impact. RPA automating the follow through, speeding up the post engagement activity, average call times reducing, which is the AHT, which is known the contacts in the business, the first call resolution numbers, they all make for happy customer engagements. This impacts customer churn. The customers stay rooted to you and loyal because a happy customer is actually a walking referral for the business. So the operations see significant efficiencies and cost reductions, and that's cost impact for you. I just touch on one more, if, if you don't mind. Uh, for sure. Operational impact, making the contact center agent a happy person. The new engagement center is now a data-driven AI learning engine, helping businesses be proactive. Eventually, we'll move into this intelligent self-service or specialized agent routing to a super agent, which is the agent, human agent, with the bot alongside, who will be able to handle a wide range of calls and support all digital engagement.
from a self-service supermarket? In short, the answer to your question, the future really is a contact center will move from an operational assistant, the role of just answering questions, to a central customer-centric business engagement center. So it's going to be central to the business. And contact centers are not going anywhere. They're just going to become more important and more business oriented. I hope that answers your question. Uh, yes, you did. More than enough, for sure. Thank you, Anil. Uh, and really, this is very rich panel. Uh, all contribution here is, uh, I, I believe it will be very helpful for uh, uh, AI sector uh, uh, in general. Uh, well, uh, back to uh, Mr. Sanjeev and also back again to CX. Uh, <laughs> uh, Mr. Sanjeev, is RPA uh, uh, the right uh, intervention for CX? And when can we expect uh, 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 to use it? When do we, uh, when, uh, do we use it? I think um, RPA has been around for, for, for many, many years now. Um, and I'm sure we are talking, we are talking current age. Things move really, really fast. Uh, but I think from, from the time RP was 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 born and from the time it has been actively used, uh, we've seen we've seen we've seen a sea change in the way RP has developed over time. And especially now with AI being introduced onto the RPA platforms as well, it's it has become a quite uh, I would say fast journey for, for people to sort of make the change. Um, Having said that, I mean, I'm, I'm a firm believer in, in somebody who's trying to get things right first time, then to have things repeated again and again. RPA does exactly that for you. So RPA is actually a short-term solution which we try to fix an immediate problem as quickly as possible through the mode of automation and using robotic process automation as an exercise. But having said that, um, what, what does not work very well in the favor of RPA is that most of the times in today's dynamic world, Processes, business models, organizations change, and they change very, very rapidly. And uh, any, any, any rapid transformation does not yield a very, very positive outcome for the use of RPA, because RPA is still an old style code which has been brought in in a, a particular fashion to sort of solve a particular business problem. And the moment the business problem change, the paradigm changes, RPA then becomes defunct. Somebody has to come and rewrite the code or rejig the entire process process element in order to sort of make it sort of apply again. Um, hence, I think the idea is now in today's world we're looking we're looking at AI based RPA exercises, which means that people are looking at an interactive mode where AI is sensing every single transaction, where the RPA can also become a self learning exercise instead of it being a very very passive one-time core kind of an option. So we definitely recommend RPA being used in repetitive processes, customer experience, uh, you know, experiences where the things are very repetitive, uh, like an IVR machine and so on. So for surely RPA is a very, very good play. But having said that, we have to be wary of the fact that if things change, RPA is not gonna be the first one to change. So you need to have systems which are configurable instead of the ones which are cast in concrete. And that is where we have to sort of look at the agile you know, business impact from today's world. I would, I would probably summarize in a very short time for that. I realize that the session is sort of you know, coming to a closure. Let's go ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Sanjeev. Uh, well, welcome, Mr. Ahmed. I hope you are here and I hope you can hear us. We are looking actually to hear from you. From you. Are you there, Mr. Ahmed? Ahmed Sharp? Uh, well, um, oh, Ashraf, I on mute. Facing network issues, so I'll just request uh, Ahmad, if you are available, please switch on your camera, or if you can say something, please unmute yourself. Yeah, yeah, uh, it seems he's not here. Yeah, apologies on that, Ashraf. Uh, we'll keep you posted. He's really trying to re-log in, but I believe the network is not on his side. It, it happens. One of the challenges of connection, and maybe AI will find a solution soon. Uh, <laughs> so back to our uh, experts. Uh, uh, Mr. Imtiaz, uh, Mr. Imtiaz is uh, he's an expert uh, 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 in uh, uh, data science, actually, and I would like to ask you also related to uh, CX, uh, what area, what exactly the areas of AI will impact CX most going forwards, Imtiaz? Thank you. Yeah, uh, thank you for the question. 
just before I answer that, let me just make one more observation. Going back to, to some of the comments that both Sanjeev and Anil were making, and indeed Anas for that matter, very good panel. You know, we were talking about how the mobile has really been driving a lot of this because the data has been generated here, the customer is often here in the mobile. Two years from now, it may well be that this replaces the mobile smart connected glasses. So think about this how, as a comment was made, how increasingly, even in the physical world, we're finding statistically that 70 to 80% of purchases made in the physical world originally start in a mobile interaction. When we have these things with 5G enabled to, uh, around the place two, two years from now, you can have customers walking around interacting with everything around them. So computer vision, real-time computer vision combined with text analytics and edge, the edge being the devices around us, because today, AI goes to a remote cloud server and fetches data back, it's sitting on the remote cloud servers. The world in 2022 and 23 onwards, as we get more and more 5G, standalone 5G networks, is gonna be increasingly with the AI being on your mobile or on a smart glass and all the things around you, connected devices. So increasingly, we're gonna find AI that is increasingly compressed, it's a technique called neural compression to make it more, work more quickly, more effectively. Collaborative learning, possibly with federated learning. Someone mentioned the legal issues. And that, when you combine that with differential privacy, federated learning you can get around a lot of those issues to enable AI to scale in areas like healthcare, finance, like banking and insurance, where, where uh, data privacy is very important. But you can still get around that because you don't remove the data with federated learning. You, you just update the mathematics of the machine learning globally from all the users and then redistribute it. So we're talking about a world really, as I said, where context really matters, real-time interactions. The customer is used to, you know, um, engaging with things like that. They don't want you to. They don't want you to follow them around and spam them one hour later after they're they're doing something different. And you're telling them, yeah, I saw one hour ago you were you were outside my my store. <laughs> maybe you're interested. It's like I've gone now. Maybe I've even made my purchase from your competitor, right? So you want to get them at that moment in time when they're actually thinking about what they want to engage with and get your offer, but in a way that it's helpful to the user, that you're directly engaging with them in a way that they want to be engaged with, that you're relevant to them, that it's highly personalized, personalization at scale, but actually helping them solve a problem, which is that they, they want to make a purchase or they want to engage with a product, learn more about it, and you're there to help them. And that's what AI can really do in this situation. Another thing that Anil said that is really true is that when you look at the technology company, the cost, if you like, the cost of technology and the cost centers, and increasing, incre when you look, uh, let me go back a step. When you look at the tech majors, Google, Amazon, et cetera, Facebook, Alibaba, they view technology as a revenue generator. And, and indeed the startups, the technology startups view tech as a revenue generator. And they're in building in the customer experience aspects into it, into that, the way they approach that technology, the databases, et cetera. Whereas traditional businesses, legacy businesses view technology and data science as a cost, as a, as a cost, not a revenue generator. And that mindset has to change. If you don't change that mindset organization wise, your data science and AI projects will fail, they'll fail. And in many cases, they are failing, unfortunately, because you have to think like a technology company to bring this technology in. So you want uh, to invest in your data centers, in your da data capabilities, modernize them, but don't just view it as a cost, but view it as a potential to generate revenue and think right from the outset, how can we get our AI and data science people to work with the business team together, right from the design stage all the way through so that we get successful outcomes because the data science team, they'll work very hard, but they may give you a solution that doesn't solve your business problem, right? And your business people won't understand the AI side and the build. So you could think you're getting X and end up with Z, which is no good for you. So where are we going going forward? So we're going to a world where the CEO and the C team will increasingly own the AI and data science initiatives internally. And they've got to be deeply integrated within the business team. And they have to be designed with such a way that value creation and the customer service is actually being built in. But again, taking advantage of everything around that, around the, the, the fact that we're going more and more to the edge, the edge being AI on the mobile, AI on glasses, AI on devices and sensors all around us to give this real-time interaction. Thanks. 
Great. Thank you, Mathias. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, well, Mr. Anas, uh, uh, Mathias just, uh, he was talking also about machine learning. Uh, and uh, you told that you told us some about that, and uh, but we need to go more deeply, a little bit uh, deeply, uh, especially related uh, that customers uh, and users' behavior uh, feedback. Uh, we need to talk about uh, 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 the customer-focused experience. If you can give us more about that. Uh, as example, I would like to pick uh, recently introduced in, in Saudi Arabia the seasonal entertainment or events that is uh, going to run in, in a very short period of time. And uh, happens this year, it will go for in during November. And as, a, as an example, you need to, uh, to have a, a quick analysis about during the season, what's going on, and how the customer purchasing behaviors are going on, and what is interesting, what is not, and which 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 things, which offers that is attracting our customers or providing more engagement experience. So for that, I think the collection of the data is one of the key important aspects uh, that to be enabled through the digital channels. The uh, the algorithms that is need to be designed and uh, 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 I would like to say also that these algorithms need to be evaluated for accuracy in a very short time. And as you see the agility for data collection, data consumption, data analysis, providing the learning models uh, that uh, and need to be used multiple algorithms at the same time multiple learning algorithms at the same time. You see, because you, you have a lot of, a huge variety of algorithms that can be used to do the same purpose. So this is very important to, to be tested uh, and to, to see the results and to compare the multiple algorithms results. So you can derive something reasonable with context to, to your customers. And, and this is putting a lot of challenges uh, for data scientists to manipulate a huge amount of data in a very short time, and which is which is required uh, requires a lot of machine learning capabilities. I think skills here is very important factor to and having the number of resources we lack a lot of a lot of resources in pharma data scientists and data engineers to be able to feed all these machines with the right data at the right time and able to judge and help the business people to judge what's going on is it is it a right or wrong algorithm this is the big question i think mtias has a lot of experience in this but this is the big question the output of the algorithm after doing extensive work is the million dollar question is it close to the reality is it uh, accurate enough? Can I depend on this? Can I take a decision? And this is the big challenge out of this. We need to keep uh, the agility methodology active because we, we, need the, we need to try fast, fail fast, learn fast, and successful fast. Amazing. I think, yes. Yeah. Yes, very clear. Thank you. Thank you, Anas. Uh, well, guys, uh, actually, uh, uh, we are like, uh, we are talking here like uh, we have something, uh, uh, some maybe that shit which we talk about because everyone talk directly to the point and uh, exactly on time. So we have one more round uh, and it will it have to be uh, it has to be like in uh, one minute, uh, maybe 90 seconds, not more, uh, about what, what, what the conclusion, what is the final capsule which we can say, it, which we can give it here today in the World AI and RPA show. And again, I will start with you, Anil. Mike, with you. Right, yeah, so 
AI is uh, is here to stay. It's only going to get better. Um, if one were to quote the singularity expert Ray Kurzweil, uh, he's predicted by 2045, the bots and the machines would be smarter than all of the billions of individuals put together, which means it's not just smarter, it's also able to do repeatable repetitive tasks forever and forever. A human tires, a human has attitude, behavior issues, whatever, but the machine doesn't have any of that. So managing a machine would be a lot easier, a lot less expensive, and it works like crazy. So I, I think the way this is going is the AI bots, machine learning, RPA, all of the automation that's coming through, eventually is going to see us having three-day work weeks. We'll be sitting on the beach. Uh, having more leisure and let the bots and the machines take over and hopefully in increase or improve the quality of life. In terms of contact centers and human interaction, I guess uh, some of the human element is not going to go away. Uh, the AI is going to enhance the ability of the human to interact and provide better customer service. I think in the, at the end of the day, at least in the generation that we are living in, we still like to touch, feel, see human beings. It's, uh, 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 you know, just COVID has shown us that, you know, sitting locked up in a room without any social interaction is hardly a life worth living. So I guess how much we automate, a good combination of all of the technologies along with good old fashioned human intelligence is gonna be the way it's gonna work. Thank you, Anil. Uh, and yes, what would you like to tell us uh, now? Yeah, the imagination is the limit. I won't say too much about AGI, you know, but as uh, Neil was saying, it's in the, the, the future. And I think humans will also get more intelligent because well, with, hum with brain computer interfaces, in particular, I think in the 2030s, when we get 6G, which will enable faster interaction, you know, um, AI won't develop in isolation. Humans will interact with AI ourselves and perhaps become smarter, who knows? But I think the thing is that data is going to go very rapidly, even over the next few years. We're only just starting with big data. This growth of IoT, Internet of Things, um, AI on the edge, you know, a lot of internet connected devices that 5G will enable, is predicted by IDC that by 2025, we'll have 175 zettabytes of data, and 30% of that will be consumed real time. 30%, that's more data being consumed real time than we generate today. <laughs> and that's what it actually means. And so real time interactions are going to be key. So, and when we get to the situation with Facebook and Google and others, um, Microsoft, et cetera, all planning and launching, and Apple launching uh, um, AR-enabled or VR-enabled glasses, I, with 5G-enabled, I should say, um, let's say about 2023 is more realistic. I could be in London, I could be in New York, I could be in Paris, engaging with your store in Dubai, real time, <laughs> seeing the items, feeling, you know, engaging with them, making purchases. I could be in Dubai talking with a customer in China or Japan using neural translation and AI, um, and they hear me in Chinese, in Mandarin or, or Japanese fluently, <laughs> and even if I don't speak that language. Even if I could be speaking Arabic or English or Hindi, and they could be hearing me in their language and seeing me as a hologram, and I see them as a hologram. That is the world we're going to. It sounds like science fiction. That is the world we're going to two to three years from now. So change is coming faster than ever before, and it's about understanding it, being agile, and, and, and maximizing on it. Think fast. Think fast. OK. What a conclusion. Thank you. Uh, Sanjeev, uh, actually, I, I wonder if your uh, conclusion will be also related to uh, RPA and uh, CX, or actually, because uh, uh, maybe we need to uh, hear more from you about from you about that. Please go on. I think uh, uh, probably in terms of conclusion, let us try to understand one thing very very clearly here. We are trying to create AI powered experiences, but these experiences have to feel near natural human engagement, as we call it. When we being social beings, that is something which which is integral to our our interaction. So all said and done, I think the way I see it, we have we have two sets of uh, people sort of coming, you know, sort of emerging in the world now. We have the AI leaders and we have the AI followers. Uh, I would say that almost 90% or 95% of the organizations in the world today are following AI 
necessarily as 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 a method of adoption because they're trying to follow what others are doing they think it is a reactive mechanism for them to improve their customer experience whereas as 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 india has rightly mentioned some organizations are taking a more proactive approach they are looking at ai as a disruptive mechanism to actually change their entire customer you know experience uh, you know on 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 the fulcrum completely into into a different angle having said that i think i'll try to probably point some of the other factors while while i'm sure you know uh, anil probably portrayed more about the positive side of it i realize that people are very very optimistic about the way they approach ai i see that people are trying to do too many things today at the same time which means ai is not going to be their only mechanism to concentrate on which means they will be overestimating their capability to run transformation programs very fast i also see that there is there are there are two integral issues that people face today one being the governance of the whole customer experience how do you want to see the entire governance structure come through second is the clean customer data because customer data today is not definitely available in the, in the most foundation courses in in the in the right manner and these capabilities are sort of building together for us to look at the euphoria or i would say the the, the utopia where where we have everything working in a in most seamless fashion uh, but all said and done i'm trying to look at the more ground realities and i see that there are significant issues that we are looking at uh, only tiny fragment of people are very very sort of sure about achieving this we should go about it a more pragmatic manner we have real time decision making we have predictive behavioral analysis ai chatbots are coming of age we are looking for hyper personalization we all know that but all said and done we have to look at how ai can actually be adopted as a strategic change and a competitive advantage instead of just being followers that's my quick take on this thank you Thank you, Sanjay. Uh, Anas, I think uh, utilizing RPA and AI will put another challenge for for all the organization in the future, where the customer is expecting more from each and every organization uh, to be surrounded with a lot of options and easy to to uh, to uh, to do actions. With a with a retailer, with the entertainment provider, whatever it is, the organization and the industry, and uh, most importantly, the expectation of the customer would expect a real reaction on some behaviors that he will expect that when he enter, as example, to enter the store or your premises with an offer, with a, a promotion, with a entertainment whatever it is the, the the engagement but he's expecting something from you to action according to his behaviors and this is what a lot of challenge for the organization to be up to the speed and will be a differentiator for each and every organization who's adopting the ai and rba as well as amazing great thank you anas uh after all what we heard um i have to say that uh it was a very uh, fantastic journey to go through the future uh through uh, this uh four of experts uh, uh, uh and actually the knowledge which we have which we had here uh, deserves to be documented puja we have to do something actually uh, uh, the content is very important which we could uh, hear today uh, i'm very proud to moderate that important panel and uh, before uh, 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 the last word i would like to pass the mic to the uh, director of this conference uh, ms puja the director of forlet ai and rpa show for the final word welcome puja um sure thanks ashraf uh, well uh, puja is right on the back end but i'll be taking it forth uh, ashraf uh, and uh, thank you once again to all our eminent panelists